Welcome back to a bonus episode of Inside the Nest. I'm Anthony Cafone. Just when we thought we were out, they pulled us back in. Both men's lacrosse and baseball went on playoff pushes this past week. Let's get to the action. In their first season in the Coastal Lacrosse Conference, the men's team took on Mary Washington at Sprague Field on Tuesday. It was a fast-moving game early with goals being traded back and forth. Shot and a goal by Danzig again. Feed the hot hand. <laughs> they went to the half down 10 to seven, and then a flurry of goals had the Red Hawks outscoring the Eagles 11 to four in the second half. Matt Danzig's led the Red Hawks with four goals as Tyler McCreary, Joe Cavino, and Ethan Mounier added three. Montclair State winning this game 18-14. Today for Montclair State Sports, a huge win Absolutely. for their cross team. And they'll face Salisbury, I believe, towards the end of this week. Halftime, down three. I wasn't panicked and they weren't panicked. We knew we just had to simplify things a little bit, get in on defense, and, uh, and, uh, you know, and when we had the ball, we were doing some nice things. You know, when uh, the ball was going in for us, we just had to you know, be a little less careless and take care of it. And once we started to do that, you know, our guys are very run oriented. And when we went on our run, the juices started flowing a little bit and obviously we we're able to take advantage of that. Both team seasons are on the line ultimately. And you have to play for 60 minutes if you want to keep your season going in May. So we knew that they were going to throw basically the kitchen sink at us, give us every single look they could, both offensively and defensively. And they did, credit to them. They went up early, they put 10 in um, pretty quickly in the half and, and we had to bounce back, be resilient. So I'm also proud of our guys because as much as they threw at us, we were able to deal with it and, and overcome it. You know, obviously it's a, it's a big game and uh, playoff, playoff lacrosse is, uh, you know, is great. You know, and uh, obviously we're going to prep as best we can, like we always do, or no matter who it is, and, uh, and, and go down there swinging. You know, we uh, uh, are in uh, probably one of the tough, biggest conferences and toughest conferences in the country, and we're, we're proud of that, and we want these challenges, and, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to have a couple more days together and try to extend that even further. You know, the goal in January is to play meaningful lacrosse in May, and uh, now, they're, now it's even more meaningful, and uh, that, that's most important to us. The Red Hawks then moved on to the semifinals, where they would face top-seeded Salisbury University on Friday. The Red Hawks fell behind 7-0 after the first quarter and saw the Seagulls net the first four tallies of the second before Tyler McCreary stopped the bleeding. Unfortunately, it was a short-lived bandage. In the end, Montclair State lost 23-7. We moved to baseball at Dreary Yogi Field. The rain continued to plague the Red Hawks, moving the game from Thursday to Friday. Number four seed William Patterson took on MSU for the 207th meeting in their NJAC tournament matchup. The Red Hawks jumped out early with an 8-0 lead in the fourth inning. Capped off with home runs from Ryan McKenna scoring two. Because that one's crushing the right field. Long run for Carter. It's gone. Deuces. Talking about electrifying there. Ryan McKenna, two-run shot. 5-0 Montclair State in the fourth. And Jason Moore with a three-run home run. There it is again, and another home run for the Red Hawks. Second homer of the inning, Jason Moore goes deep, a three-run blast. It is 8-0 MSU in the fourth. From there, there was no turning back. The Pioneers worked two runs on the board before Joe Gisanda put the Red Hawks up seven with a homer to center field. The 9-2 win and had the Red Hawks moving on to their second game against TCNJ, who upset Kane in their first game. Dugout Rowdy. Grounded, up the middle, more ranging over, throws on to first, in time! And the Red Hawks take down William Patterson 9-2 and book a date with TCNJ tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. at Kane for their second game of the NJAC playoffs. You know, we set the tone with Pontari to start. He came out, he threw one of his best games of the year. Um, I thought our offense was relentless in sticking with the approach. It, it paid off early in the game. We did a good job. We limited our strikeouts, I think, to two, two today. Um, put the balls in play the right way, and, and we were rewarded for it early in that game. We built a good lead, and, and then Lummer, Lummer with two and two thirds of one hit ball. I mean, that's, that's everything you want out of your fifth year senior in that moment. Uh, I just want to keep putting together good at bats, uh, controlling the zone. Biggest thing, just pounding strikes. They have a really good offense. Um, it's a lot easier to pitch when your offense puts up eight runs through the first four innings. So it's hard to beat a team three times in a season, and uh, to do it against a really good team like that's it's really nice. And to have all the bats working one through nine is really crucial for us. 
Well, sure. Every game at this junction is is vital, right? You you don't want to be closer to your season ending. You're vying for an at large bid in moments, depending on what happens in the tournament. And obviously, it's always good to be in the 1-0 game under the lights tomorrow night. The Lions recorded their second upset of the tournament against the Red Hawks, winning 12 to five. Sam Angelo and Joe Jasanda showed some flash with a pair of home runs in the effort. But it's not over yet for Montclair State. This is a double elimination tournament. They went on to play Kane on Sunday, but unfortunately they lost to the Cougars 11-8 to end their NJAC tournament bid. Joe Jasanda had a shining last game going 5-5 for with three runs and two RBIs, hitting two home runs in the game. Now we wait for the at-large to see if their season continues. To cap off playoff week, Red Hawks on all fields saw some accolades. In women's lacrosse, Caitlin Zazaro made first team all NJAC alongside goalie Joey Grotkoff. Veteran Chelsea Stack received an honorable mention. For the men, Tyler McCreary and David Metzger made the second team all CLC. One of the biggest awards of the year went to Sam Angelo. He was named NJAC Player of the Year in first team. Ryan McKenna made first team. Miles Feaster, Matteo Pasculi, and Reese Malik all made the second team. And last but not least, from the softball stadium, Jenna Maluso, Amber Reed, and Alyssa Borzan all earned second team all NJAC honors. Congrats to all the student athletes. Student athletes here at Montclair State are at the top of their game. Broadcast interns, on the other hand, are a little bit more in the middle. Let's see how Charlie Badweeney fares against one of the top pitchers in the NJAC. I'm Charlie Badweeney, and this is Athlete vs. Intern. Today, I'm going to be going up at bat against Ali Cavallero, pitching ace for the Montclair State softball team. With 277 career strikeouts under her belt, I'm facing quite the uphill battle. Joining us in their usual positions are Chloe Saperstein and Alyssa Borzan at catcher and shortstop. Why am I doing this? After calling their games for the last few months, I wanted to see how I would fare in the batter's box. Now, how is a guy who is more comfortable in the broadcasting booth going to fare against a top pitcher in the NJAC? Let's find out. <laughs> All right, so I shouldn't have swung on that one, right? Right? Don't swing if it's not a strike. OK. <laughs> Look, I, I'm I'm going for quantity over quality. No, no, so no. you're working it at bat right now. Yeah. So only so we can strike. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bat's heavy, dude. Yo, that's a base, right? That's a base. Yo, let's go. All right, you want to just go fastball, see if you can hit it? All right, she's going to throw it middle. Yeah. Swing, try to hit it. OK. Too late? Yeah, start earlier. Yeah, I am indeed watching you swing. <laughs> Yeah! I can go home now. No, I'm just kidding. Where are your hands on the back? Down low? She's throwing fast. So I recommend choke up a little bit. You don't have to be at the bottom, just uh -huh. like up here a little bit more. So you, it limits your bat speed a little bit. You get the bat through the zone faster, you get better contact. Boom. All right, coach. All right? All right. Go do it, kid. Hey! That's a base hit! That's a base hit! <laughs> Let's go! Sat on the curveball outside. That's a good job. Yeah? Yeah. What did, what did I just do? You sat on the curveball outside to get to field. Yo, Allie, get sat on that curveball. Yeah. Oh, that was bad. It's a great pitch, Al. One more? Okay. That's an out, though. That's an out. You do like the curveball. Yeah? Yeah, you like the curveball. Just wrapped up for the afternoon. Uh, out of, I think it was five at-bats, got two.
two hits off of Ali Cavallero, who was one of the best pitchers in the end jack this year. So I think that's a success. I didn't look like a total idiot. And uh, I think I'm gonna remember this day for the rest of my life. For the Red Hawk Sports Network, I'm Charlie Badweeney. Sophomore freestyle swimmer, Julie Tiedemann had a record-breaking year. From the YMCA to the Panzer Pool, this Red Hawk has only just begun. I never really liked any other sports. I'm not very coordinated on land, but I really fell into swimming and I was competitively swimming since about the age of five. For sophomore freestyler Julie Tiedemann, swimming is in her DNA. Uh, my parents swam. My whole mom's side of my family swam growing up. My mom swam in college. So it was just a big family thing that I was surrounded with really early on and I really enjoyed. Back home in Westchester County, New York, Julie was part of the Rye Y Wave Riders, a successful YMCA swim team where she was coached by her parents. It was really nice growing up with parents that understood the sport and they really are some of the best coaches that I think I've had in my life because of our relationship. They kind of knew what was going on at home so it helped them understand me in the pool a little bit better. As part of the Wave Riders, Julie was a YMCA state championship finalist. She continued to swim on the Wave Riders during high school. Eventually, it was time to take the next step in her swimming journey. I was looking at a bunch of different colleges for, you know, D1 swimming if I wanted to go into the South, but I really resonated with the coaches here and the team. D3 was definitely more of a team sport. It really kind of felt more like a family and I appreciated that more. So I decided that I would prefer to swim D3 and I just really liked the team here. Julie's first season at Montclair didn't come without its struggles as she dealt with health issues that kept her out of the pool. It was extremely challenging. You know, you come to school ready to swim, you're excited, you're getting to know your team. And then I kept getting pulled out for various reasons. I was sick, I was injured. I would come into athletic training and they would help me a lot with rehab. And so I really just kept building it back as much as I could, doing everything I could, even though I was out of the water and missing practices. This season, Julie was intent on making it special. She broke a Panzer Pool record in the 1650 free, broke a school record in the 1000 free, and became a Metropolitan Champion in the 500 free. I came into the season ready that I wanted to break a bunch of records. I called it my record season in the beginning. So I put in the extra work and I really trusted my coaches. I told them up front that this is what I wanted to do. And they helped me, you know, outline that goal and the milestones I had to hit so that I could do that. Julie's coach, Brian McLaughlin, knows the work she puts in. She just grinds and goes. And that's leadership because people are looking at her. They know she swims fast. How does she do that? It's not magic. She buys in, she works hard, she sets the bar high. She's matching up with some of the best um, that we've had here. With her sophomore season in the books, Julie has her sights set on securing a spot in the NCAA tournament. I would like to qualify for NCAA championships and actually get to go because sometimes when you make the B cut, you don't hit the invited time. So I would like to be invited to compete at NCAAs and swim and represent Montclair State. That's my next goal, I would say, now that I have the records, hopefully by next year, but if not, by senior year. Well, that's gonna do it for this semester of Inside the Nest. Promise this time. We've enjoyed bringing you all the news, highlights, and profiles about the Red Hawk athletics. Everyone have a safe and action-filled summer. We'll see you in the fall for more Inside the Nest.